the case of the state of Michigan versus Lolita Jones, case number 23S00437. Good morning, Your Honor. AP Rachel McDuffie on behalf of the people. And good morning, Your Honor. Regina Garrett Carraher on behalf of Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones, can you turn your camera on and state your name for the court? Oops. Can you see me, Your Ms. Lolita Jones. Ms. Lolita. Lolita Jones. Yes, Your Honor. Um, are you sick? Yes. That's not true. Yeah, she's she's got a pretty bad sinus infection, Your Honor. I apologize. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> you keep saying that, but I find that very, very hard to believe. I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you please state your name? Lolita Jones. Thank you. And Your Honor, today is a date and time set for a pretrial in this matter. I've spoken um, with Ms. McDuffie, and I do recognize that there's a bond violation report that we need to address, which I will address at the whenever your honor's pleasure. Um, but I would also be asking for an adjournment in this case. Um, I intend to get an investigator involved and do a few interviews of some witnesses that were there. And we just need some time to get that to happen. So let me arrange her on the bond yeah, The community corrections uh, bond violation indicates that you tested positive for uh, opiates and does she have permission to use thc she does have a valid medical marijuana card your honor and she states to me that she's been taking a lot of medication for colds and whatnot and she realizes that that's probably not where the opiates came in she believes that it may have been some bad marijuana that she got that was laced, but she states that she does not take any other um, illegal substances, um, and she does have a valid ma medical marijuana card. All right. Um, before we get to that, ma'am, you're entitled to have a hearing regarding this uh, matter at which time, if it is found that you violated the terms of your bond, you could have your bond revoked. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. As to the bond violation, what does your client want to do? Well, Your Honor, she would admit to missing the test. Miss um, Jones is the single um, provider of financial support to both her and her children. I'm not violating her for the missed test. I'm violating her okay. for the opiates, which is what I just arranged her on. Okay. All right. Because I was going to say that's why she's um, missed the test. But as far as the opiates are concerned... She, she would admit to the violation and she believes that the only way that she would have gotten that is through some bad marijuana. So she understands that she we can't do that. Whether like she's going to admit or not. So you can do the explanation afterwards, but it's a step-by-step -step procedure. If she wants to admit to it, then that's what we'll do. Yes. All right, ma'am, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony about the provider will be the truth, the whole truth, but nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Ma'am, is it true that you tested positive for opiates? Yes, ma'am. I find that there's a knowing will and admission to the violation of the bond. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? She was satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Now, Ms. Garrett Carhar, as to her explanation. And if, again, Your Honor, her explanation is she's not sure how she got the opiates in her system. She believes that it may have been through some of the marijuana that she um, did ingest, which she does have the medical marijuana card for. She understands that that's not really a, an excuse, but it, it is a reason. And she notes that she will from now on make sure that that does not occur. And I, I would also like to add that the um, allegations against her did not involve drugs in any way. Um, and she does not have a significant history of any type of other substance abuse or use issues. Ms. Your Honor, I don't, yes, Your Honor. Um, so yes, the, the allegations in this report deal with a, um, a high level of intoxication that appears to be from alcohol. She's, I think currently just on the PBTs. I guess, I guess that's sufficient. Um, I usually prefer ETGs if possible, but um, <clears throat> I don't have any other knowledge. Um, I can check really quick. Ms. Jones does have another uh, warrant request into our office for a retail fraud case in another jurisdiction that has not yet been assigned for review. That's been actually hanging out for quite some time. Um, but I don't see any allegations 
uh, right away. I don't have that report handy. I'm just I'm just scanning scanning. Pardon me, really quickly through the history to see if there's anything else here. Um, that's obvious. So I don't see anything else regarding to uh, re relating to drugs, uh, just alcohol, to my knowledge. And your honor, if I may, um, in the police report, it doesn't say they investigated. They did not intent. They intentionally did not investigate as an OWI. So I'm not sure that there was a high level of intoxication. The officer actually wrote that due to the level of intoxication and the ability to separate them, he was fine letting them go at the scene. So I'm not sure where the high part would come in um, as a level of intoxication, even at that point. Thank you. All right, in this particular case, ma'am, you are in violation of your bond. I am gonna continue the testing as um, was uh, already ordered. It, with the exception that you should be ETG testing. I'm not certain why you're not. I'm not certain how uh, Ms. McDuffie came to the conclusion that it was only PB. I guess that's all I see is PB. Uh, I'm going to order ETG testing. And what is that testing, if I don't mind? You don't mind me asking? That's for alcohol. Yeah, I don't even drink. That was just the weekend of my birthday. As I indicated, I'm ordering ETG testing. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> As to her... Marijuana card, um, I don't see where this court actually approved the marijuana. Community Corrections doesn't get to approve that. I'm the one who has to approve that. So I need to have that submitted to this court for approval. Yes, Your Honor. Would you like just the card or do you need me to submit it in a motion? I need the letter of necessity, really. The card is not what determines okay. the necessity for it that determines it. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> In terms of the next court date, does November 16th work with your calendar, Ms. Garrett Carr? I believe so, Your Honor. Let me check really quick. Okay. Sorry. No worries. November 16th would be fine. All right. November 16th at 9 o'clock a.m. I presume there's no objection to the adjournment. Is that correct, Mr. Duffy? No objection. And we would be appearing via Zoom again, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, Ms. Duffy. You're welcome. Have a great day, everyone. And you can log off, Ms. Jones. Thank you. I can't go out. <clears throat> I'm sick. o'clock a.m. If you're making your payments, you do not need to be here, Mr. Jantz, but I know you know that already. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, you as well. Thank you. I will call the case of the state of Michigan versus Ronald Ray Wilson. Case number 24S00001. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Assistant Public Defender Davi Lebo for Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, could you uh, wait some to unmute you and then state your name, sir?
Right. Yeah, I'm Ronald Ray Wilson. We are for sentencing today on both the contempt proceeding as well as the original underlying charge. Have you had a chance to review the report with your client? I have, Your Honor. We have no modifications. Thank you. Ms. McDuffie, anything you'd like to say at this time? So, Your Honor, I know that I think I say every docket that I'm concerned um, about something. There's lots to be concerned about here. Um, one of them. One of those things is just the fact that uh, Mr. Ray Wilson doesn't appear to even comprehend um, what this case is. He said it was a made up charge. I think in the sentencing report that we have, all charges are made up by somebody. But um, his that he called the victim in violation of no contact orders throughout this entire case. Um, I don't even have the total number, but um, it was consistent contact all the way up until let's see. Um, Quite a few, quite a few calls using different numbers. I'm concerned about his conduct during the trial that resulted in a 30 day contempt um, charge. And I, I'm not sure how that affects credit if he started serving that immediately um, after the trial or if that's yet to be served. So I don't know how that affects the count for credit. I'm concerned that he perjured himself during the trial. So I, you know, I don't think there's been a case yet until this one where I feel like I don't know that there's anything that any sort of probation classes programming would do to have any sort of effect here because mr ray wilson is just so far away from getting it um and just when i think you couldn't possibly be any dumber and i and i think that's a willful refusal to get it that i don't i don't know what would help um here so i agree with the recommendation which is to serve the rest of the remaining time it's just a shame i agree so the rest of the time oh I'm glad to that you agree, Mr. Ray Wilson. Mr. Ray Wilson, please Ray don't Wilson, interrupt. please don't interrupt. If you do that again, you'll be held in contempt again. Each contempt is consecutive, meaning that you do additional time stacked. Nothing else for the people, Your Honor. Anything else you want to say, Mr. Ray Wilson? I mean, you just no, it's nothing else to say. I'm just waiting on census. Defendant is to serve 30 days in the Washtenaw County Jail for contempt of court. That sentence is to be served consecutive and, pro and preceding the uh, original sentence for the malicious use of the telecommunication services. For that sentence is 180 days in the Washtenaw County Jail. Credit for 97 days, sir. Eighty-three days to be served. Defendant is to complete the in-house MRT program if he sees fit. If not, then he doesn't. Fines and costs are waived. There is the $125 state minimum fee and victim impact fee that he needs to pay. You're all set, sir. All ready. <laughs> Yeah, I'm done.